Hello everyone, my name is Political Toadette 2006 and in my third video here of my predictions for the midterm elections, we have reached the Senate. Uh, it is without a doubt the chamber out of the House and the Senate. The Senate is definitely the one most in question. It is nip and tuck in the Senate. It is a, it's almost a bloodbath in some cases, but we are expecting to see very close Senate results. While the red wave is for sure hitting the house, well, red wave in air quotes, uh, for some, the red wave in the Senate is, well, it's, it's there, but is it enough to take over the chamber or will Democrats hold their very narrow 50-50 majority? There are 35 Senate seats up in the states illuminated. The states not illuminated like Minnesota, Michigan don't have a Senate race this time around. There's a second dot here in Oklahoma, so there's two Oklahoma Senate races as a special election. I believe it's I believe it's James Inhofe who is uh, the Republican who is retired or leaving the Senate, and so they're going to do a special election for a four-year term. But 36 very close races, well, some of them are close, most of them aren't, but Currently, at this point, Democrats have 36 holdovers. They have 14 seats that are up, while the Republicans have 29 holdovers. They have 21 seats up. So, excuse me, let's see how this goes tonight. Um, we know, for the most part, what states are safe blue and safe red for sure, though. This is what we do know. So let's go ahead and get into the safe blue states. Your usual suspects of California... Oregon, Hawaii, those three for sure. Illinois is also there. Maryland, Connecticut, Vermont, and New York. These are the eight for sures. And based on what we've seen from 538, these are the pretty safe, confident ones. We're, 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 we're saying they're going 100% blue. No doubt about it. Which gives the Democrats now 44, only six away. Remember, vice president is tiebreaker. So the Democrats technically only need to get to 50. The Republicans need to get to 51. So... We'll, uh, we'll start now going to the Republican side where we have a lot more safe races. Uh, first is Alaska. And a common theme I've brought up is jungle primary systems. And so it's going to be either Lisa Murkowski or Kelly uh, Shabaka who wins pretty much. We don't know. I guess it'll be one of those two. Lisa Murkowski has been. I don't know how she keeps on winning considering it seems like the people of Alaska don't like her. Um but anyway, what else we got? Idaho safe. Uh, Utah is another interesting one. Uh, Utah is a race between Mike Lee, Evan McMullen. McMullen, of course, running as an independent. Democrats did not nominate anyone for this race. They instead threw their support behind McMullen, but it looks like Mike Lee is going to win in this race pretty comfortably. So North and South Dakota, safe red. Kansas, no surprise. Both Oklahoma races are safe red. Louisiana, Arkansas. Missouri, which there was a brief time where some people thought Missouri could be competitive, but in the end, it will not be. Uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Alabama, South Carolina. So right there alone, Republicans are at 45. Uh, based on what I've seen, I will add two more. One of these is Iowa, which Iowa has been interesting because Chuck Grassley has been in the Senate since 1981. He has been in the Senate way longer than most of us have been alive. And his age has come into question from some people. He's up against Michael Franken, though. But Grassley, despite a slight dip, he still is expected to win. He's had some polls. This specific Selzer A plus poll had him only up three points, but it looks like it looks like Grassley's going to win this race pretty handily in Iowa. Uh, the other state that just now has become a safe red state, according to 538, is Florida. Which is interesting. This is, of course, Marco Rubio. You might remember him from the 2016 primaries. And he's been definitely favored over Val Demings, but he's gotten a slight boost to where uh, we're comfortable putting it in the solid column here, it looks like. Um, so that now puts, at this point, if you just give the solids away where they're expected, 46 Republicans, 44 Democrats. The Republicans need to get five. The Democrats need to get uh, six in order, because, of course, the 50. 50 rule. Now, there's a couple Democratic states I think we could throw in pretty safely. One is Washington, which has been interesting considering that this is 
has been clearly favoring Patty Murray. Yet Tiffany Smiley has been uh, lowering the gap slightly. There's been polls where uh, this Trafalgar group poll, Murray only up one. No, no poll has had Smiley leading, but maybe polling is close enough that Washington won't be necessarily a runaway. You also have Colorado, where Michael Bennett and Joe Odea, Bennett's been relatively favored to win virtually this entire run. Uh, this Trafalgar group poll only had him up by two, so it won't be a landslide either in Colorado, but it should be a pretty good win for Bennett. I don't think he will get a double-digit victory like Jared Polis will in the governor race. So now I think with those, you're at the real Senate battlegrounds. These eight remaining states are really the realistic ones that are going to be close. And the first one I'm going to categorize is another Democratic one. And it's one that I feel like if a different candidate were on the ballot, this would be a Republican pickup. That is New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire stays blue in the Senate race. Maggie Hassan is uh, against a candidate named that Maine doesn't have a race. <laughs> Maggie Hassan against Donald Bullduck. This is a race where Hassan basically was given a 87% chance to win. This race is tightened up though. Republicans kind of gave up on this race, but they started putting money back into it and it's gotten closer by doing that, but maybe it was too little too late. Now this Trafalgar group poll a couple days ago had Bullduck up one. So We'll see how it goes here, but it might have been too little too late. Maybe if the Republicans continued to put money into this as they were slowly getting some momentum throughout the month of October, uh, that race very well could have flipped, but I don't I don't see it happening in the Granite State. I think that one stays blue. So now it's these seven that are close as well. And so you've got really virtually almost all these states are your usual suspects in terms of now what are close races in presidential races uh, on what is the kind of new battleground map, usual suspects like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Arizona and Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio. Let's get a couple for the Republicans here that I think are going to go their way. The first one is North Carolina. This is a race where you have Ted Budd, who's I believe a representative against Sherry Beasley. And this is a race that got somewhat close in September, but Budd has been favored this whole time. And polls have had him up consistently. Uh, there's been a couple polls where it's been kind of even, but for the most part, a minus from Emerson College, but up by six. I think I think Ted Budd is going to win this race. This would be a Republican win. North Carolina has been close, but it's a state that has traditionally gone Republican, though. Uh, it only went to Obama by about 13,000, 14,000 votes in 2008. It went to Mitt Romney in 2012, stuck with Trump both times. It's a it's a state that I think still leans Republican, but is still somewhat close for sure. I think also Ohio is uh, is a bit more to the right than North Carolina, but this one will go red. I think Tim Ryan has made it a little more competitive than maybe it was, say, you know, back in June against J.D. Vance. Um but we'll have to see what happens here. I think, you know, as well as the fact that Mike DeWine is favored by like 20 points, uh, there might be enough coattails to get Vance up. Most recent best here, A minus poll, Vance up nine. I think, I think JD Vance, he won't win in a runaway, but he's going to win by a pretty decent margin, I would say. And I think that is going to be a Republican hold. So that puts the Republicans at 48. Um, so what could be next for the Republican Party or the Democrats? Uh, I'm going to stay with the Republicans here, and I'm going to go ahead and give them the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin is interesting because of the governor race, which I personally feel like is going to go to Tony Evers, the Democrat. But I think Ron Johnson, the Republican, is going to beat Mandela Barnes. Now, this has been a also somewhat close, and it got very close early in September. But Johnson, ever since then, despite what some people criticized him for his debate performance that he had against Barnes, He's had he's built up a pretty good lead. And so, you know, he was originally not going to run for this third for a third term. He decided, you know what? Sure, I'll run for a third term and go for it. Got an A rated poll. Siena College had him up by two. I think he I don't know if he'll win necessarily by four and a half points, but he's going to win, I think, by minimum of probably two and a half, three. That's kind of what my belief is. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, before I get to the big kind of three closest ones, I will also, though, real quick, give Arizona to Mark Kelly, the Democrat. 
I think if Blake Masters wasn't the candidate, I think Mark Kelly would be in more danger. But I think Mark Kelly, although it has been going down quite a bit recently, Blake Masters has been kind of putting in a comeback. But most recent A-rated poll from Mar- uh, Marist College, Kelly up by four. So I think I think uh, Mark Kelly will win this race. There is a third-party candidate who could get about who could get a couple percentage points here, but I think Mark Kelly will win in the end, which leads us to really the three close ones. You have 49 Republicans, 48 Democrats. There have been no flips. Every state that I've categorized as is uh, currently held by the incumbent party. This leaves Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. I'm going to start in Nevada, which is Adam Black Salt and Catherine Cortez Mast, uh, Catherine Cortez Masto. Uh, this is a race that was kind of back and forth, but Laxalt has started to pull away a little bit. I think this race and the, uh, governor race go hand in hand together. Laxalt has name recognition. He just barely lost the governor race four years ago to Steve Sisolak. And I think, I think he's going to win. This would be the first time since, oh, I don't know the eighties since, and even then it might've still been in democratic hands, but this seat, of course, this is the Harry Reid seat. Uh, of course, he retired, to, and Cortez Masto won the, this seat, and now I believe Laxalt is going to flip this. I have felt in my mind for a while that uh, ever since I found out Laxalt was probably going to get the nomination in the summer, I felt this race was going to go red all along. I thought maybe Sisolak would win the governor race, but I think Laxalt might win by about a point or so. I think this is about right. A minus poll, though, not long ago, had Laxalt up by five. I don't think he's going to win by five. I think the most he could win by is maybe two and a half, three, kind of similar to Wisconsin um, in that regard. This leaves us with Pennsylvania and Georgia. And I don't even know where to begin with either of these. I'll start with Pennsylvania, though, first, and just kind of look at what we've got. It's a dead heat here. This is John Fetterman, Mehmet Oz. Fetterman had a stroke. That was kind of the, I guess, October surprise in a way. Oz has made a comeback here because the odds were against him quite a bit in September. But Fetterman and Oz, this race has gotten very close. Now, while the governor race is very much in favor of the Democrat, Josh Shapiro, is it enough to get John Fetterman over the finish line in a red wave year? We don't know yet. It's hard to tell. And Oz has the name recognition, but is he the best candidate for this race? You know, that's that's a big wager people are making, I think, with this with this race. Now, most recent A minus poll has Oz up by two. So, you know, Oz has been leading in some polls recently. And so we don't know, I don't think entirely yet, what's going to happen. I mean, Fetterman should, uh, I feel like Fetterman being, you know, uh, is he attorney general or lieutenant governor? He, or no, he's state senator. Fetterman being a state senator, he has name recognition in the state. I mean, he was at a great spot, but I think the mix of him unfortunately suffering a stroke as well as the debate performance that both candidates had man i mean this is a coin flip nearly i think you know if maybe this wasn't a red wave year i wouldn't necessarily say this was a toss-up race but i'm gonna go i think i think fetterman is actually going to win um, but I would not be surprised if Dr. Oz wins this seat. I would not be surprised in the slightest because I just feel like in my mind, this is a, I mean, this is a virtual dead heat and I've just felt in my mind, the governor race is clearly favoring the Democrats. There will obviously be ticket splitting here where people will vote for Josh Shapiro, but also vote for Dr. Oz. I don't know if Dr. Oz has also run the greatest of campaigns, and so we'll have to see. I don't know if the recent endorsement for Fetterman of from Oprah does anything. I don't really know if that does much, but uh, this race go either way. In my prediction, I'm going to have it as blue, but if it goes red, I would not be surprised at all. It's going to be a margin of within about a point or two, either side. Which leads us to last but not least, Georgia, where Herschel Walker has seemed to open up an edge here. That being said, let's not forget Georgia rule. You have to get 50%. Now, I don't, I, I right now don't know the name of this independent candidate who's getting 1.5% of the vote. But if that's the case, 
this Georgia race is going to go to a runoff between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. And that, I mean, that could be entire control of the Senate potentially. Uh, if Nevada flips and say Pennsylvania holds for the Republicans, they would, this would not impact Senate control, but it very well could impact who gets Senate control. And we'd have to wait a while to figure that out. And I don't think any of us really want to wait that long. We don't want to wait for a handful of weeks to see who has control of the Senate with a race where there have been scandals and mudslinging and controversial moments all over the place. And yet I, I believe in my mind, if I have to predict right now, I don't think either candidate is going to get over 50%. And I think because of that Warnock, I think is going to win the uh, is going to win a runoff. I think this race, I just think these Georgia Senate races have just been so, so finicky in the last couple of years. I mean, just think about the Ossoff Purdue race two years ago, how close that was that David Purdue just barely missed getting 50%. And when they went to a runoff, he lost. And I think that could happen to Herschel Walker too. It is a red wave year and Brian Kemp is definitely favored to win the governor race, but it's just a gut feeling, but this is the same where I feel like this could very well go red too. I wouldn't be surprised if Pennsylvania and Georgia flip to make it 52, 48, I would be surprised if, say, Arizona flipped, but Georgia, Pennsylvania, they it's pure toss-ups here. And I wouldn't be surprised if those go the other way. But this is my final prediction. The Senate remains 50-50. Republicans flip Nevada. Democrats flip Pennsylvania. Everything else stays the same. All right. That is going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you can go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. You tell me what you think might happen. Um, and that wraps up for my predictions. Uh, I hope I can make a video describing kind of the after effect, which is kind of like what happened uh, as a whole a day or two after. So we'll, I'll figure out exactly what I'm doing there. Um, and we'll, uh, I will go from there. So if you are out there, uh, please vote, and uh, your vote will matter, especially if you're in some of these very competitive states. Go out and vote if you haven't yet for the candidates on the ballot. Okay, that'll do it for me. Have an awesome day. Bye, everyone.